What's going on everybody? This is Chad. Welcome back to the channel and let's talk about this Helio RC flight controller. So everybody is on the butterfly train. I am. I flashed all my quads with it last weekend. It's amazing. It flies great. If you haven't done it yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. There's nothing to be afraid of. Go and do it. Regular F4s, 8K, 8K, you're going to have an amazing time. But going through Butterflight and reading all the slack and all the research and stuff that I've done, I really wanted to see what this thing could do at the higher PID loops and gyro loops. 32K, 16K, whatever. So without really doing a lot of research, I saw that, hey, there's this flight controller that comes with Butterflight. So it must be just like butterfly whatever I'll go ahead and order it up so had some PayPal money laying around got it and started doing more research and started to find out that whoa this is completely different this comes with butterfly on it but it's completely it's a completely different kind of butterfly kind of and it's a completely different kind of flight controller I mean we're talking going back and having to use a PDB and all kinds of that stuff but to cut to the chase, it is worth it. And I'm going to show you some flight footage at the end. If you want to skip through it, you can, but you're going to miss a lot. So anyway, this flight controller development and firmware and hex files are being updated like constantly here in the past week. I think there's been a couple and there's definitely going to be a couple more on the way to tweak the performance and the filters and everything like this. But what makes this flight controller so special is that it has, if I understand correctly, multiple flight controllers built into it, um, like an F3 and an F4. Uh, we'll take a look at the wiring real quick here, and then we'll get into all that stuff. Wiring up is really simple. Uh, everything's done on the top. You do have a top and bottom a pad right here for your signal pads and they look small and the gummies go there and I thought oh I'm gonna burn the gummies but the gummies are pretty heat resistant and these take solder real nice so wiring up was not bad at all so from your PDB you can wire in straight VBAT and power everything it will automatically power your 5 volt rails here um, you do want to solder this jumper here on VBAT if you do want to run everything on VBAT and I'm doing that right now because I am having an issue getting my smart port telemetry to work and I need my battery voltage in my OSD so this is the way that I'm getting around that. Um, it's got black, black box built into it that automatically starts logging as soon as you arm and fly. I mean it has everything and the best part about it is that the thing actually works, man. I mean, it it's just crazy. I mean, I'll get into this and show you. But the most important thing right now is that if you do buy this, you want to download your hex file from the website. And this thing is pre-configured with everything that you need to do. It's even got like UR2 set up uh, to wire in up here for your receiver it's already set up for s bus everything like that is already done all you got to do is just go through your normal like osd setup and transmitter setup and your sub trims and all that kind of stuff obviously if you're using crossfire you're going to be using a different set of uarts over here um, it's got the video in and video out going on uh, current sensor all that kind of good stuff it doesn't come with a connector here so there's no wires for like a 4.1 ENC, ESC. You kind of got to pick that up uh, separate. If we click on the documentation here and look at the specs, um, it's going to tell us that it has two processors built into it, the F3 and the F4, and it's using the gyro, the ICM 20601. Um, it is built for full data flight, uh, beta flight support as well. Just all the stats here. I'm not going to read them all. Go to Helio RC and you can see all that. And then this is where things get pretty crazy. And that's why I wanted to show everybody this because I was thinking that I would get this. I would uh, 
plug in the CLI commands that we're all pretty much used to on uh, Butterfly now, which is just uh, set fast Kalman and set Q400 and set R88 and just go to town tuning, doing whatever. But this is like completely different because you can see all this weird stuff like you have, you know, pitch cue and roll cue and yaw cue and you have all these different things. And it's using a dynamic Kalman filter in there inside the actual IMUF. And it's, it's hard to explain. I can't explain it all. I'm not even going to try, you know. You'll have to do some more research on your own or stick around with the channel and check it all out and stuff. But you can see it's completely different when it comes to like tuning. They show you videos as far as like um, how to get rid of this and get rid of that. And the thing that's crazy is that since the, since the gyro is so isolated behind hardware and software, that your pid tuning is totally different. It's lower pids, and I went on the stock pids, changed my rates a little bit, and um, I did decrease my y'all D, uh, D to uh, five, because I always do that on all my builds. And you can just see here what they are saying is that they create like a sound proof room and because of this your old values may long the longer apply um, they're faster pid loops and the flight controller doesn't have to filter any of the gyro input it's all being done by the other processor that is on board so basically you get more out of p and d that so you can drop those down actually and it will go into it here like talking about everything. Um, you know, there's no overclocking. There's none of that stuff. It's all built and all ready to go out of the box. So the best thing is, is let me show you what I put this thing in and then we'll get to the flight footage. But this is just an overview. If you thought you're just ordering a 32K board and you can copy and paste CLI commands, that's not what's going on with this thing. It's a little bit more involved. It's not impossible. The results, though, are pretty freaking crazy, I think, so far. So here is a close-up of the flight controller actually mounted in my frame right now. And I'm going to rework this and rewire it and clean it up a little bit because honestly, I wasn't expecting this to work out very well for me right off the bat, but I am just shocked that it did. Uh, let's zoom out here and take a little bit better look of what actually I have going on here. So I'm almost embarrassed to admit all this stuff, but anyway, here you go. A beat up old Martian two frames with different colored standoffs and everything else. Uh, Akon 30 amp ESCs running multi-shot. Got some caps on them. You can see the PDB down there underneath uh, the flight controller. Over a year old or right when they came out, Mr. Steve Motors, these things have been through war. The paint's all rubbed off of them and everything. They still work decent, I guess, but hey, it's what it is. Um, I 3D printed out a mount last night for my GoPro because I don't like the GoPro mounts that I had for the Martian. I threw an old 200 milliwatt uh, Cricut VTX in there and an RXSR because I don't have any Crossfire modules right now. So this is the build. Um, I wasn't expecting anything of this, you know, it just, I mean, honestly, besides the brand new flight controller, it's really just a pile of old parts. Oh, and don't forget the new props too. So I've been rushing to get this thing in the air and this is first takeoff, first maiden. You can hear like I got antenna things clipping and all kinds of crazy stuff, but Man, look how smooth this video is already off the bat. And I'm sitting here just flying it like, well, these rates feel kind of okay. 
and my tune feels pretty good. Like, this is almost, like, shocking. Um, plus I had, like, my crappy pulse batteries on there that weren't that good. So, I'm just kind of, like, flying around here thinking, whoa, like, what is going on? This thing should not be flying this good. This flies just as good, if not better, as my reverb that I just, my reverbs that I spend all that money on and just rebuilt and everything. Then, of course, I crashed. So after doing some light repairs and everything, I got it back up in the air one more time here tonight. And you can see the results are just as good. So I don't know if I have something wrong with my GoPro now or the SD card or whatever after that last crash, but I'm getting some like weird clicking and audio things going on in the GoPro audio. And then also, um, well, it was getting kind of dark, so you'll see the, the frame rate drop on the GoPro a little bit in a couple spots when I'm flying. Um, but, you know, these Mr. Steve motors, they're not known really for like super top end. There goes that weird whatever's going on with my GoPro type of deal. But, you know, the crazy amount of control that I have flying this thing was pretty nuts. And I tried to put it in a lot of situations where I would pick up like prop wash and everything like that. I mean, this is running off of their stock pids, uh, which is like, I think 40, 40 and 70. And then I don't know what the I values are. And I think D is, I think stock D is at 30, but I've read that people said to go ahead and lower them down. So I lowered my stock D's on pitch and roll to 20. So P's of 40 and D's of 20. And this is what you're getting. And you know, this is not like fully tuned or nothing like that at all. But if you've watched any of the, the flight videos that I've put up in the past week with the butterfly stuff, I'll put a playlist up here. You can go through and just look at my reverb flights and stuff like that. And you can just tell me what you think. Do you think that they look better? I've been watching them and I'm like, I really can't tell a difference. I mean, this old busted up quad here with these old motors, but this flight controller and the butterfly firmware and all of the different settings that they have and they've built uh, for people, you know, to get good stuff on defaults is just awesome. I mean, I could just pretty much like point and shoot this thing wherever I wanted to go. I do need to obviously work on the tune a little bit more and work on the rates, but I felt totally super comfortable flying this thing. And I was still just in amazement and shock on how well it flew. So I'm going to keep the video playing here if you guys want to keep watching some of it or whatever. There's going to be a lot more on this. I'm going to, it's going to be a great weekend. So I'm going to get to work on cleaning that, uh, that Martian 2 up and keep doing some research, get some batteries charged up and work on getting some, uh, you know, better rates and tune and stuff like that going on. And maybe like look at these black box logs and see if there's anything I really need but like right now I think I just want to focus on getting it actually like feeling um, a little bit more to how I want it to feel because it just has such has such an amazing feel but I really want to like work on it and see how much better I can get it but anyway that's it guys I will see you on the next video so Thanks.